Hi, I'm Michelle Neal and welcome to The Theatre Show, your window into Australian community theatre. In the news this week, Harvest Rain Theatre Productions has launched a program to help art organisations affected by the Queensland floods. Harvest Rain's artistic director, Tim O'Connor, says, We look forward to joining the community and rebuilding our city, and in particular, cleaning up our beloved arts buildings that have been so affected by these devastating floods. Queen Street Studios have announced their 2011 Performing Arts Residency Program, funded by Arts New South Wales. The residency offers free workspace in Studio 14 at Fraser Studios for a Sydney-based performing artist from January to November 2011. The new theatre have opened their 2011 Spare Room, funded by Arts New South Wales. New Theatre's The Spare Room program provides a space to nurture a thriving independent theatre sector, developing new audiences and providing a platform for the creation of challenging and stimulating contemporary work by both emerging and established artists. To apply, visit the New Theatre website. And that's the news. Coming up in the spotlight, the musical open for inspection. But first, Cheryl Ann with the guide. There are so many great shows opening in Sydney this January. The Wizard of Oz by Alfred Bradley from the 7th to the 28th of January at Henry Lawson Theatre, Warrington. The Adventures of Paddington Bear by Alfred Bradley and Michael Bond from the 8th to the 30th of January at the Genesian Theatre, Kent Street, Sydney. Beauty and the Beast by Ashman, Rice, Menken and Wolverton at the Gosford Musical Society, January 18th to the 27th. For something different, why not try Snow White? A pantomime from Holroyd Musical and Drama Society from the 14th to the 22nd of January at St. Stephen's in Marylands. From pantomime to musical, Hyperspace, the Star Wars musical by Peter Novakovich. It's on for two days only, 28th and 29th January at Town Hall Theatre, Campbelltown. Now, last but not least, Spring Awakening, music by Duncan Sheik, lyrics by Stephen Sato. Shire Music Theatre, January 28th to February 6th at the Memorial Arts Theatre, Sutherland. For ticketing information, visit showline.com.au. Well, that's about it. We'll keep you entertained this summer. Enjoy. In the spotlight today is the musical Open for Inspection, an exciting new Australian musical comedy about the one topic that Sydney ciders care about most, property. Set in the cutthroat world of Sydney real estate, Open for Inspection is a wickedly black new musical comedy. Two ruthless rival agencies battle for buyers during a property slump. They soon go to extreme lengths to literally make a killing. Our reporter Tim Rochford is at the Darlinghurst Theatre talking to the director, Sarah Stockley. Over to you, Tim. I'm at the Darlinghurst Theatre for the opening of Open for Inspection, a musical comedy, and I'm here with Sandra Stockley, the director. The opening scene is nine real estate agent looking people dancing and singing. Yes. How did you manage the space? We've got a very minimal set which was designed by Barry French, who's really fantastic. Mm. We, we had a fantastic choreographer, Amy Campbell, who actually came third in So You Think You Can Dance Australia in 2009. And she was fantastic. She worked with all the cast and, and choreographed all the songs. The premise of the show, it is about uh, a down, down and out sort of real estate agent who's not selling very well and he becomes a serial killer, sort of more or less because he hits on deceased estates and he sort of finds his bias. His victims tend to be kind of older women of a certain class and um, kind of a certain hair colour who live in a certain sort of area of Sydney, I suppose. James Pope, who plays Bagley, who's the lead, he just the other day went and got an especial cockatoo-style <laughs> haircut, a $10 haircut, so it looked kind of a bit rubbish try-hard real estate agent, which is his character. Uh, and the girls are trying very hard, making their hair look very slick and sleek, which is, you know, your typical real estate agent look. Bagley, or Baggers, he uh, is after that big sale. Does he eventually get it? Well, he does, but not by uh, the best means. But he, he gets a lot of sales in the property sense, but his ultimate goal is really to get this girl called Debbie. And uh, Debbie's a, at a rival 
firm, a rival real estate agency. Yeah, he does whatever it takes to basically try and get her by uh, any means possible, and that even includes killing old ladies for their properties, for their deceased estates. I've always known it was different. One thing I seem to have this chorus. Do what? Would follow me round and say inappropriate things. Yes, too much He's deeply pathetic. The genres of music, as you say, are quite mixed. There's, yeah. um, is there a certain burlesque element to some of this? Uh, there is. There's um, yeah, a couple of saucy slash sleazy little numbers. Um, well, there's one that's touch disco, one that's all out country hoedown, people trying to rock out. So it's, yeah, it's lots of fun. It's a real mix. Sandra Stockley, good luck. Thank you. Uh, have a great night and thank you very much. Thank you, you too. Michelle, over to you. If you only see one musical about real estate this year, make sure this is it. You can catch Open for Inspection at the Darlinghurst Theatre from 13 January to 13 February 2011. Tickets are available at the Darlinghurst Theatre website. Short and Sweet is the world's largest 10-minute international theatre festival. Now in its 10th year, Short and Sweet matches the best new Australian scripts with the best Australian talent to produce an evening of great variety, originality, and astounding professional delivery. Mel Day is at the Newtown Theatre talking to Short and Sweet Artistic Director Alex Broon. Hi, I'm Mel and I'm at the Newtown Theatre for the 2011 Short and Sweet Theatre Festival. Joining me today is Alex Broon, Artistic Director of the Festival, which is currently in its 10th year. Alex, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure, Mel. So what is Short and Sweet? Uh, Short and Sweet is the largest 10 minute play festival in the world. It started in Sydney way back in 2002 and it's now been running for 10 years. This is our 10th anniversary this year. Short and Sweet's open to everybody, all levels of experience, whether you've just stepped off stage at the Sydney Theatre Company, whether you work regularly with the Pimble Players, whether you've done some community theatre down at the Redfern Community Arts Centre. Um, whatever, basically, level of experience you have, you're welcome to be involved. Yes? Bang. Come on. Bang. Get ready. Yes. More. Yes. More. Yes. Yo, take it. Come on. Now. Week two saw a who's who of Australian theatre talent, including Dominic Stone, acclaimed actor and director, Stephen Wallace, award-winning film and theatre director, and one of Australia's greatest playwrights, Jack Hibbard of Dumboola fame. But forget all that talent, because this week you can come along and watch me in Dessert Pairs, directed by Francis Gates. Here is a sneak peek of what you can see in week three. This week is a wild ride for audiences of all ages. The show starts out with a new comedic take on the princess fairy tale generating raucous laughter and applause. The short and sweet journey then meanders through an esoteric take on all things love and passion. Followed by a spine-tingling underworld action piece of epic proportions. To finally, a couple's journey into reawakening their passion for one another. I think I feel like having sex. You think you do or you do? <laughs> Whether you're into fairy tales, love, the underworld, or simply the comedy of riding a bike, there is something for everyone in this week's festival. You'll be on time for your private Zumba lesson. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alex. Congratulations on the success of Short and Sweet so far, and I'm sure it has a huge future ahead. And good luck with the rest of this festival. Well, thanks very much, and uh, I just uh, urge everybody to come along and have a look. We're here for another six weeks here at the Newtown Theatre, and also for three weeks at night or in February. There's some fantastic 10-minute theatre, some fantastic actors, directors and writers, some new people you haven't seen before, maybe some people you have, but they're creating some quality 10-minute theatre. It's a very lively, entertaining and unusual night of theatre, and I'd urge you to come along and have a look at Short and Sweet Sydney 2011. Thank you so much for joining us. So don't forget to check out the website and see how you can become involved in next year's Short and Sweet Festival. Back to you, Michelle. Short and Sweet Week 3 runs from Wednesday the 19th to the 23rd of January at the Newtown Theatre. Tickets are available on the Short and Sweet website. I look forward to seeing you there. After the break, our regular weekly segment, 
Theatre Craft. Hello, welcome to Theatre Craft. Today we'll share with you some tips and tricks for your next theatre production. The trick of the day is how to make fake blood look like true blood. You will need a few things to start with. A bowl, some mixing spoons, a half cup of warm water, a tablespoon of cocoa powder, three to four tablespoon of golden syrup, and a teaspoon of red food coloring. Now let's get started. Mix the cocoa powder with the warm water in the mixing bowl. So here we go. And let's mix the two and until they dissolve one into the other. It smells good actually. The next step is adding the, the red food color with the golden syrup. The quantity of red food color and golden syrup really depends on the consistency and color you want from the, from, from the fake blood. Adding more golden syrup will make it stickier and take longer to dry. Now let's combine the ingredients. As we said, one tablespoon of red food color. Oh, it's a bit more, so the blood will be a bit more red. Let's get the golden syrup into the mix. And there we are. And this will be a very sticky blood. Again, mix the whole lot. Obviously, adding the golden syrup makes everything a bit thicker. Make sure that all the bubbles that can be sitting on top of the mixture are gone. Let it sit for a bit of time, but we're good right now. And here we are with some fake blood, which tastes good. Back to you, much. That's a useful tip in today's vampire crazy world. Well, that's all for this week, folks. To suggest content or get involved in the theatre show, visit our website. And a big thank you to Sandra, Alex, and this week's presenters. I'm Michelle Neal, and we'll see you next week.